So welcome to Techno Dad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we have something really fun. So we're going to do the basics of a RetroPie. So how do we do it? Uh, how do we get it installed? And we'll talk a little bit about ROMs, and we'll show you some places to get some free ones that are free to use. They've uh, been released to the public. Uh, if you want to find more about ROMs, then actually just Google that and you'll find different forums well th where they'll talk about those and they'll show you how to get those. A quick shout out to Boz Kashi, who is the winner from our quilt video from two weeks ago. And Boz, if you can contact me on the Open Media Vault forums, we'll get that sent out to you. And if you like this video today, make sure you like it. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And here we go now. And I would like to say a special thanks to my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. Thank you. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out the description below to see how you can become a supporter of Techno Dad Life. Okay, so you're going to need a couple things. So one is an SD card. And so here is a 128 gigabyte one. And you'll need an adapter for to plug into your computer. You put the micro SD in there and then plug it into your computer. So that's the first thing you'll need. Uh, next you'll need a Raspberry Pi. There's the Raspberry Pi and a case. And so this one is actually a Raspberry Pi 4 and you can tell because it has the blue USB there. And then also here is a Raspberry Pi 3. And so here you can see no blue here and they actually are mirror images of each other. So here you can see the Raspberry Pi 4. The ethernet port is over on this side and then the on the Raspberry Pi 3B it's on the other side you can see there's the bottom there's the top and we'll put the top back on this otherwise you you can't really tell any difference between the two of them uh, next what I would really suggest is getting a nice case too so this one is called the Argon One, and right now it's just available for the Raspberry Pi 3B. And you can see what they did is there, I'll show you a picture of it right now. And what they did is added a daughter board in there. So then the side ports, which here you can see the sound uh, HDMI and the power port, we're all moved over to the back and then plus there's an on and off button and I would really suggest getting something with an on and off button if you can. Then finally the last thing you need to get are some controllers and so these are just some cheap controllers that I got off Amazon. If you want to play with a friend I would definitely get two and so i'll leave links to everything in the description but this is where you get started so to get started uh, we need a couple things and so the easiest way to get everything is go to amazon and so you're going to need a sd card micro sd card that is 65 gigabits or gigabytes or better i use both 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes then you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 3B plus or higher. And so right now, RetroPie only works on the 3B plus. Uh, it does not work on the Raspberry Pi 4, but they are working on that and I'll show you that. And I would actually check the RetroPie site uh, before you buy one to see if the Raspberry Pi 4 is supported. It uh, is much more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 3 and it will probably be a better experience once it is fully supported. And then finally, if you want, I would actually look for a nice case. This is the Argon One case, which is sort of sleek. Uh, this is also good for if you're going to create a media center. 
And you can see here it has a daughter board and that daughter board moves all the ports to the back so then uh, it just makes a cleaner implementation of the case you can see there. If you go to retropie.org.uk you uh, be welcome to the page and if you scroll down we'll go features then it will talk about updates and if you look at the updates it will and you click continue it will tell you which Raspberry Pis are supported and here you can see at the time of this video they're still working on Raspberry Pi 4 support but it should be up and running soon I'm imagining. So the last thing you'll need is Bella Anna Etchard and this is so we can burn our RetroPie image to our SD card. And so you'll need to download that, then install it. Once you're done with that, get RetroPie and it will give you choices of which Raspberry Pi you can download for. And here you can see where you still have the three is the highest. So we're going to download that right now until they get a Raspberry Pi 4 image. So once that's downloaded and you've installed your SD card, click Select Image. Click on RetroPie and open. Select Targets. And uh, Etcher doesn't like large SD cards, so we have to click the green button, click Continue, and then click Flash, and then click Continue again. Once that's done, we can close this. And Bella Anna Etcher. So Etcher automatically unmounts the SD card, so then you can just pull it out. So next what we need to do is take our SD card, put it in our Raspberry Pi. And now we just need to hook up our power supply, our HDMI, and our two retro controllers and then we can fire up our RetroPie. Okay so we have our RetroPie all put together and so now let's start it and see what happens. Okay so the first thing we need to do is configure our gamepad. And then just follow the directions what it has for setting up the game uh, gamepad. And so just a short word about ROMs. So basically ROMs are what games you can play. And so RetroPie itself does not come with ROMs, okay? If you own the game, you can rip it from your cartridge or whatever form it's in. But there are free ROMs on the internet and here you can see mame.dev.org uh, they have some games you can download and then there are abandonware games which you can also use and so or uh, public domain and so here you can see at zohor's domain uh, there are this is game boy nintendo sega dreamcast sega genesis and then there's even uh, Super Nintendo uh, games that are available. If you want other games, you're sort of in a legal quandary if you're in the United States. Uh, but if you want to look up more about that, just a simple Google search will find you more information. And so then after you have your ROMs downloaded and installed, uh, then you can load up games and you can play as much as you want. And so making a Raspberry Pi retro gaming machine is a lot of fun. Uh, it's just not going to be a fast process. So you have to do some internet research on finding ROMs and deciding what you want to do there. And also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, as you're going through the uh, getting your controller ready, if uh, you get past the amount of buttons that you have, look at the screen and we'll tell you to hold down and press so most of the and then you can go through the different extra ones which you don't have uh, most of the directions for the retro pie are on screen you just have to look closely because usually they're in sort of uh, shadow type on the bottom there but a really fun thing and uh, I would do it more look at it as more of a project rather than something that is going to be you know the perfect gaming machine because it is 
uh, emulated for everything. So you're going to have to experiment with different things. Which controllers work the best for you? Uh, which games you find work the best on your Raspberry Pi? And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you put a comment down below uh, which you would like to see. And uh, I'll leave links to everything that I used in this video. And you have a great day and bye bye.